Right, Mark, the next thing I'd like you to do is put this into your mouth, onto your tongue. Well, for the first time, certainly in the UK, we have gone through a complete experimental setup where we know as many and we've measured as many of, of the parameters as we possibly can. And I think for the first time in the world, related these real-life cannabis driving situations. We've measured saliva fluid levels, the urine fluid levels, the blood fluid levels. We've used realistic doses. We've controlled them against placebo. We've asked people how they feel. We've tested out how impaired they are with police surgeons doing standardised sobriety tests. Um, we've asked them their, their subjective opinion. And finally, we've actually related that to how they perform on a number of tests. Right. These tests measure the physiological effects of cannabis and set them alongside measures of the psychological effects given by mood assessment questionnaires. This complex experiment assesses the effects of cannabis in two ways. The first is a simple tracking task, technically a classic experiment where the situation is tightly controlled. The second is a task which more closely mirrors the real world. It's carried out in a driving simulator and tests overall performance. Okay then Mark, this is the uh, adaptive tracking task here. Um, basically on the screen you will see a circle which will randomly walk around the screen and uh, then there will also be a dot. And basically your task is using the joystick to um, try and keep the dot within the circle, okay? Right. So, you happy with that? Yep. The classic tracking task tests one aspect of driving performance, the skills you'd use to keep in lane on the motorway. It's a task that's been stripped down to the essentials. It simply measures hand-eye coordination. And it's sensitive enough to pick up even slight changes in reaction times as a result of the effects of cannabis. The drawback of this task, however, is obvious. It's nothing like the sort of tasks you might encounter in the real world. The TRL driving simulator is about as close as you can get to sort of real driving in this sort of experimental setup. On the road studies have been done um, in Holland, for instance, but the, because of the safety factor, the doses they're using um, have to be so small that you end up not seeing the effect. So doing a the quasi experimental situation does allow you um, more control over the, the experiment and therefore you can be more realistic on the sorts of levels of cannabis that people are going to use. As you can see, um, this is a driving simulator, and as you can see, it's a real car, um, and it actually has hydraulic motion, so you're going to get all the feedback that you would from a normal car as you're driving along. We've done everything we can to make it as, as real life and as realistic without the obvious um, dangers and all the ethical considerations, which really exclude the possibility of doing it in a real life situation. And I'll talk to you further from the control room with some instructions about the trial. Brilliant, cheers. One way in which we try and characterise the driving task is to think of it in three different levels. And we talk about the operational control level, simply your ability to press the pedal at the right time, steer in the, in the right direction. The higher levels from that, though, are the tactical level, um, deciding how you interact with other traffic, what lane you should adopt, what speed you should adopt, given that the other traffic is doing this, that or the other to you. And probably even more importantly, there's the strategic decisions about whether you should take this journey or not, um, what type of journey you should um, conduct. Now, you can imagine that those factors, tactical and strategic decision-making, could be heavily influenced by impairing agents like cannabis and or other drugs. And it's, it's those sort of situations which we need to start to tap into. OK, Mark, I'm just going to set the computer up ready for you. So you've got the road number here, this is road number one, and this means the abscissa, which is the position along the route, so we know exactly where the driven vehicle is. And here is the speed of the driven vehicle, which at the moment is um, increasing sort of up to the 50 mile an hour now. The advantage of this computer-controlled simulator is that every participant reacts to the same events 
on the same stretch of road in the same sequence. Thank mm-hmm. you.